a pregnant woman was brought to the hospital, who had just been hit lightning. Unfortunately, we managed to save only a child and he was born an albino. The father asked me to show him the newborn, who was placed in an incubator. Brain wave meter shows too much activity. The man said that it was not his son and began to cry. Some time passed, a strange child was raised by grandparents, but they died. It turned out that the albino was capped in the basement by relatives. Sheriff Barnum invited child psychologist Jesse Colwell to visit him. Neighbors say that the guy is mentally retarded and generally some kind of crazy. Perhaps the old people did not just hide it from everyone. The sheriff and the psychologist went down to the basement. The guy sat in the dark and said in a calm voice that his name was Powder. Finally, the guy showed up to Jeremy Reed. That's what Powder's real name is. The sheriff couldn't take eye from such an unusual person. Jeremy says he can be outside until the sun is very high. He has a painful sensitivity to light. It happens that dark glasses don't help. Powder never went to school, although he loves to read. He has a phenomenal memory. Boy asked Jesse to name any page in the book and told him exactly from memory what was written there. He knows by heart all the books that are in his considerable library. Powder in sunglasses and old left the basement in his grandfather's suit. When he was passing near the police cars, the siren suddenly turned on. Only now the sheriff noticed that the roof of the house was studded with lightning rods. And the assistant also said that the body of the deceased grandfather was saturated with electricity, as if he was being fibrillated. Jessie brought powder to the small town of Whiten. She works in a boarding school for boys and is going to leave him here. Unusual the young man attracted the attention of guys playing football. Jessie tells a colleague that Jeremy is behaving like an unintelligent child who still knows nothing about this world. In the cafeteria Jeremy eats apart from the rest. Of course, the locals couldn't ignore him. Bullies. They sat down next to him and asked him why he looked like a vampire. Jeremy tried to ignore their leader John but he took his food and said that all newcomers are tested by them, namely, they must keep a spoon on the tip of their nose, like Mitch, well, or in their ass. Powder took a spoon, rubbed it and left it to stand on the table. The rest of the cutlery was immediately magnetized to it. Everyone in the dining room froze in place. Then another spoon appeared and danced to the rest, destroying the entire structure. Powder smiled, but John looked at him with an unkind look. The sheriff has a difficult relationship with his son, and his wife Emma is terminally ill and in severe pain. The whole city is already talking about an unusual guy. The nurse shared her opinion, calling him defective. The doctor examined Jeremy and declared that he was perfectly healthy. Soon, special lenses will be brought to him to protect his eyes from bright light. Jesse suggested that the young man go to a local school and he agreed. By the first day of school, Jeremy had received his lenses. After getting off the bus, he immediately gathered the surprised looks of all the students who were in the schoolyard. Physics taught by an eccentric teacher Donald Ripley. He rolled out a device called Jacob's Ladder. It was invented to demonstrate electric current. The electric arcs that appear one after the other make powder uncomfortable. He is shaking all over, and the metal objects around him are jumping and deforming. Suddenly, electricity began to pass through Jeremy and back. The guy was lifted into the air and levitated until Donald smashed the device. The teacher touched the boy and an electric current passed through his body. Reporters have gathered outside the hospital where Jeremy was taken, but the sheriff won't let them in. In Donald also tries to break through the ward. The doctor said that Jeremy showed no signs of electric shock. He feels great, although a hefty hole was burned on his sweater. The teacher concluded that Jeremy is an electrical conductor, so his hair does not grow. In the meantime, Powder, unnoticed by anyone, escaped from the hospital. The guy wandered down the street until the dog of his classmate Lindsay began to bark at him. She surprised the guy recovered so quickly. Lindsay noticed that Jeremy had a beautiful eye color, but he immediately removed the lens, which confused the girl a little. All the neighbors stare at Powder, he admits that he can listen to people from the inside, all their thoughts and memories, but Lindsay did not take his words seriously. Jeremy walked back to his house, but the sheriff blocked his path. Boy feels that the deputy is afraid of him. He says he doesn't want to go back to the boarding school, and in the hospital Jeremy can no longer be. His worst memory is associated with this place, his emergence into the world. I came to the boarding school from the Ministry of Education professor. 
The fact is that Jeremy passed the IQ test with a phenomenal result. Interestingly, he got all his knowledge from books. He cannot watch TV because all the equipment next to him goes crazy and he himself becomes ill. The test showed that Jeremy has the highest level of development in the history of mankind. But the guy does not care. He wants to return to the farm. He also knows that the professor is on really believes that he is a fraud and came here only to prove this. Jeremy got angry and all the equipment around him went out of order. The children from the boarding school went camping under the supervision of the sheriff and his assistant. Powder did not want to go. A thunderstorm is approaching and he feels it with his whole body. Lightning killed his mother. He personally remembers how it happened. In the forest, all the lizards from the area came running to Jeremy. And he also felt Mitch and John come up behind him. The latter had a rifle in his hands and pointed it at Jeremy. But suddenly a shot was heard. The sheriff's deputy shot the deer and is very glad about it. The animal dies in agony. Jeremy touched the deer and grabbed the hunter's hand. He made the killer feel what his victim is now feeling. The men fell to the ground and screamed in pain. Jeremy only let him go when John nearly shot him. This pain and suffering passed through himself and powder. To the sheriff and psychologist, Jeremy says that he did not attack the hunter. He just helped him to see clearly and realize what he was doing, and he himself does not want to see anyone else, even Jesse, who only pretends to be his friend. The guy smashed the cabinet with his mind. All he wants is to go home. The doctor suggests that the sheriff put his wife back in the hospital. She tortures herself and him, but while Emma could talk, she asked to be left at home. She's hopeless, but Barnum can't let her go. A frustrated Jeremy was sitting alone in the dining room that evening when a physicist approached him. Donald is infatuated with an unusual student. Apparently it is almost entirely composed of energy. It seems a little more for him just won't need his body, but his the mind is at a level of development from which people are separated by millennia. He is like a messenger from the future. Donald offered to become his friend and extended his hand to Jeremy. He decided to show the teacher a trick and electrified him, but grandparents were always afraid to touch him. The deputy sheriff has changed a lot. He removed everything from the house guns and refused to participate in shooting competition. He even stopped carrying a gun at work. Man admits that when Jeremy touched his hand, he felt wild fear and pain. He seemed to be dying along with the deer. Since then, he can no longer hunt. At night, the sheriff came to Jeremy and asked him to go to his house. Barnum wanted to know what his wife, Emma, was thinking and feeling. Jeremy conveys her thoughts. A woman cannot die in peace until she knows that husband and son have reconciled. Emma believes that Jeremy is an angel who has come to take her away. The woman asked to have her old silver ring put on her finger. It didn't take long for her to come to her senses. Meanwhile, the restless nurse called the sheriff's son to come here as soon as possible. The father came out to him and hugged his son tightly. Finally, Emma was able to safely go to heaven. Jeremy came to city fair. As usual, everyone is staring at him. Powder read the thoughts of the townspeople. They believe that he just killed Emma. He tells Lindsay that all people think they live apart from everything. But each of them is a part of this world. Everything is connected. Jeremy touched Lindsay and let her feel his heartbeat, read his mind and immerse himself in his memories. The father thought that Jeremy was ugly and always denied that he was his son. But according to Lindsay, he has the most beautiful face in the world. The girl kissed Jeremy, but her father interrupted them and attacked the guy. Jesse intervened before the man opened his arms. Powder again felt like the loneliest person in the world. He is no longer is going to linger in the boarding school, so he packed his things and was about to go to the farm. But he decided to go to the gym. Once again look at the most ordinary guys. There he stared at Sky in the shower, at his long hair and hairy armpits. For this, John began to mock the young man and took his hat. And then Jeremy said the words that his drunken stepfather had said to John. John was beaten by his stepfather throughout his childhood, which is why he grew up so embittered. The big man got angry and pinned out against the wall. Suddenly there were peals of thunder. The scoundrel, seeing that Jeremy was frightened, dragged him out into the street with his friends. Only Mitch tried stand up for powder, but John doesn't going to stop. And dressing naked poor man, he began to mock its absolute whiteness. Need to decorate, John left and kicked Jeremy in a muddy puddle. 
After, to the Goonies lifted him up and again brought him to the leader. Lightning flashed directly above them. The powder began to attract to itself all the metal objects that were on the hooligans. Suddenly, Jeremy seemed to explode with energy and everyone was scattered around. The guys somehow got to their feet, and John's heart stopped. Powder walked up to him and began to beat in the chest with electric charges to start his heart again and Jeremy managed to do it. Mitch promised that he would help him escape from the boarding school. Jeremy hid in a car with haystacks and drove it to the farm. He finally returned home and went down to the basement. Soon Jesse arrived here and found the guy in a completely empty room. From here they took everything that once was from young men. She promises Jeremy that if he goes with her, they will definitely come up with something. They volunteered to help Donald, but the conspirators did not have time to escape. The cops are here. Jesse asks the sheriff to just turn away and let them escape. Thunder rumbled again. The sheriff took his partners aside and ordered him to get out of here. For some reason, Jeremy didn't get into Jesse's car. He told the sheriff that his wife was going nowhere gone, she's everywhere. Powder ran into the field, spreading his arms and lightning struck right at him. Jeremy ran and energized until dissolved in a bright flash of light. A powerful impulse passed through people. The powder has become part of everything. Pure energy that no longer needs a human shell. 